We have now at the highest inflation that we've had in over 31 years. The highest rate of increase of inflation since George H.W. Bush was president. Some of you guys weren't even alive when that happened. The biggest thing is, is that they've been calling inflation transitory, right? Most people believe that inflation was transitory, as in it was going to be up and it was going to be over. That's what everyone's assumption was. How did we get here? COVID happened. People went out of, job, out of work. The government needed money to stimulate the economy. They borrowed money from the Fed. The Fed said, okay, we're, raising, we're, we're lowering interest rates to zero so everybody and businesses can borrow money very cheap so that they can build businesses and hire people and do all this stuff. We're also going to let the government borrow a lot of money at a one-for-one. One. We're going to take up all their treasuries and mortgage-backed securities at a total of $120 billion per month. And we're going to do that for a couple months until they have enough money to get us back on, everybody gets back to being employed after a vaccine comes out. That was the idea. The idea was that this would be a six-month process where they would print an additional, you know, trillion dollars, and that would be it. And everybody would go back to work, and everybody would be fine. So nobody really worried about inflation. If you remember, last fall, about a year ago, I actually got into gold because I thought we were going to have a spike in inflation and then, you know, see how it went from there. Didn't happen. They kept calling it transitory, 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 and everybody believed them. Then the Delta variant hit. Jobs were still out. People still had to get paid. Businesses were shutting down. So now we're going from six months to nine months. So we're going from one trillion to 1.2 trillion. Now we've got trade issues. We've got supply chains. Oh, shit, we have a vaccine that we need to pay for so we can give it to everybody in America for free. Four trillion. Uh, we need to hold, uh, you know, the, the, another round of PPI and we need to extend unemployment benefits. Oh shit. We're going to 12 months. Now we're at 8 trillion because inflation goes up when this happens, right? You're adding more money supply into the economy. And once again, inflation is fine if employment is going up at the same time, but employment has not only stayed flat, it has actually fallen. People just walk out of the workforce now. Four million people a month have left the job, the, 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 they've walked off their jobs in the last six months in a row. Now we're at 11 trillion. Now we need to start bailing out big corporations. Now we need a spending package. Now we need an infrastructure package. Now we have to combat supply chain issues, which now have put us at $20 trillion. So not only are we seeing inflation continue to explode, but they're changing the tune on transitory. And they're saying transitory just means it won't be like this forever. But inflation isn't slowing down. Why is inflation not slowing down? Because there's also a supply chain bottleneck that's happening. Some of these cargo ships that are coming from China and others, right? A year or two ago, if you were Walmart or you were Dollar Tree, you, sp you paid this shipping company $5,000 per container to bring your stuff over, $5,000, and that was priced in. But as the supply chain and the bottleneck started to creep up, what happened? The demand was there, supply was kind of, kind of, kind of falling behind, and people needed to get stuff, they became desperate. So these companies started going up 10,000, okay, as much as $20,000 per container. So what is happening? These businesses, are having to pass that cost on to the consumer because it's costing them more for materials and for shipping and everything. So that also raises the price. There's many factors that go into it. Now that we know how we got here in a very TLDR, there's so much more to this, guys, but I'm just doing a very T a TLDR of continued printing, supply chain issues, and the belief that with the labor market disappearing, we're going to see a lot of concern and, 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 and ramifications of this for a long time to go. That's why we're seeing treasuries, long-term treasuries and bonds start to dip because people are expecting that the GDP is going to slow down. Okay, now that we got that, let's talk about the difference between PPI and CPI. When you see PPI, this is your producer price index. What does that mean? That means how much it costs 
for them to make the goods, right? Producers, they produce things, how much it costs them to produce it. So let's go back real quick to PPI numbers this week. Your final PPI numbers went from 0.5% to 0.6%. Now, what does that mean? Doesn't sound like it means much, right? 0.1% doesn't seem like much. But this is increase month over month. There is so many months of increases that it just continues to go up month over month. So now we've increased another 0.1%, which is a 20% increase from the last one. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the cost of goods, what it costs them to make it, continues to go up. There's no slowdown. There's no flatlining. Producer costs are going up. Now, what happens when the, the, the companies and the producers have to have a sustained increase in payment? This is not even including higher payroll, which is a whole nother word, uh, 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 a whole nother uh, conversation right now of, of what they're paying to entice workers back in. They can eat the cost a day or two, or a month or two. But if it continues this, they are going to pass that price off to the consumer. This is the third one outside of the printing, outside and low interest rates, quantitative easing, whatever you want to call it, supply chain issues and bottlenecks, cost to produce and payroll is the third one. So if this is going on, that means we are going to pass on the increase to the consumer. So what does that mean? Consumer price index. Producer price index. If they're going to pass that on, now the consumer price goes up. Now this one is going to blow your fucking mind. Are you ready? So first, let's start here. CPI came out the next day. Point six from point to the two. Gang. Do you understand? That's a 200% increase from percentage wise. But overall, this is an increase in one month of a half a percent. Okay? We're not even getting to the crazy part yet. 0.4% increase month over month. What does that mean, Stocky? What does that mean? Can you tell me what that means? That is a 40 basis point increase in one month. We have now at the highest inflation that we've had in over 31 years. The highest rate of increase of inflation since George H.W. Bush was president. Some of you guys weren't even alive when that happened. Are we going to move into stagflation? Potentially. And some of these other uh, companies, some of these corporations are already pointing to the fact that we are going to see more increases into next year. Feminine hygiene products, diapers, household goods. But here's the thing. Sometimes these inflation numbers are high and it doesn't really matter because it's not on stuff you need, right? Like before they, they, they just said, oh, it's transitory. And this, is, this, is, this isn't a big deal because it all came from used cars, right? 60% of the uh, CPI increase was because of used cars, right? Used cars went up because people are going back to work and there's an inventory issue and that's why everything else is fine. And people believe that. People believe that. So how about I give you a couple numbers? Forget the fact that this keeps going up month over month over month over month over month over month and not slowing down. But let me give you a couple numbers. Okay, I'm going to give you guys just a, just a couple numbers, okay? This isn't FUD in any way, but I just want to give you guys a couple numbers, okay? Based on the last CPI for October, year over year, pork chop. You enjoy a nice pork chop? 16% increase in your pork chop from last year. Gas prices. 50% from last year. Used cars. You used to always buy used cars because so much cheaper than a, uh, than, a, than a new car. What happens when you buy a new car and you drive it off the lot? Anybody remember the old commercials and the old sayings of what happens? How much do you lose in value the moment you drive it off the, car, uh, off the lot? 20%, right? Guess how much used cars and trucks are up this year? Well, same price to buy a new car now. Might as well get that. Guys, this isn't political. I'm not telling you... Who's at fault? Did Trump do this before he left? Did Biden do it when he gave it? That's not, what, don't, don't try that shit. I'm just giving you the numbers. Don't try to make this political for me, okay? I, 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 I'm being a journalist, not an activist, okay? I'm not here to fucking tell you who did what, all right? All right, now let's talk about some things. Stocky, I haven't been driving this year because 
Uh, I, I I work from home now. I don't. This doesn't affect me. Okay. Do you know that bacon? Bacon. If you like bacon, it's up twenty percent. Stocky. I don't like pork. It's not halal. It's it's against my religion. Okay. Eggs. Twelve percent. Stocky. I'm not. I don't eat meat. And I'm a vegan. I don't fuck with eggs. Peanut butter's up six percent. Oh shit! No, they didn't. Stocky. I don't even eat that. I am a. I, 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 I'm on a diet. I'm only eating salad. You know, salad dressing is up 8%. Stocky, I don't even eat food. Fuck that. I'm a robot. Okay. But robots got to wear clothes. Clean clothes. Laundry equipment. 18% up. Stocky, I don't even wear clothes. Okay, but you got to sleep on, sit on something. Furniture. 12%. Stocky, I don't even, do, I sleep on the floor. I sleep on the fucking floor. Just me and my TV. Oh, really? TVs are up 10%. Stocky, I don't watch TV. TV's for boomers, okay? I have a tablet. I have a phone. I have an in-home smart whatever. 9%. Stocky, I live in a hotel, okay? Fuck having a house, okay? I'm, I'm full leaving Las Vegas. I've got a bottle of booze and a motel room. Booze, 16%. Hotels, what is it? 26%. I could continue on. I mean, there is some things that are going down, but that's because of supply and demand issues. Um, but either way, what I'm getting at is that it affects across the board. Now, some people look at these inflation numbers as wants and some as needs, right? And so wants and needs are much, are much uh, uh, different. So let's get back to two things. Stocky, what does this mean moving forward? Okay, this all comes down to a couple things. Number one, the Fed. Tapering and rates, okay? Tapering, which is pulling back the amount of assets they're taking from the government and giving money to. So right now they're doing 120 billion a month. They thought they were gonna go to 80 billion, but they only went down to 105. So they're only pulling it back by 15 billion a month. Why is this a big deal? Because they have to stop eventually. And the longer they wait and the, 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 the slower the transition, the harder the pullback is gonna be. And on top of that, they're gonna have to raise rates. Because right now, when interest rates are at basically 0%, everyone can borrow money for free. Well, not for free, but, uh, you know, for 0% for interest or close to it. What does that mean? That's great for businesses because they can borrow money to build their business and buy new stuff and, and expand and hire new people and all that. It's not going to cost them, you know, any interest. But why is that bad? The longer it's at zero, the more is borrowed, the more is borrowed from individuals and for states and governments, the more money is in circulation. Supply and demand kicks in, inflation. Now, I know there's modern money theory. There's a lot of other things that say, well, that's not true. A lot of times it's taxes, guys. Taxes are what give value to money, but that's a whole other conversation. So they're going to have to raise rates, and they're going to have to taper first. Now, the whole reason they haven't done this yet, you're like, Stocky, they have not started tapering yet. Why? Because they said they weren't going to do it until employment started increasing, right? Because if employment's increasing, more people are working, more people are paying taxes. More taxes means more value to the dollar, more spending, more economic growth. They're now spending money and the, and the, the, the businesses are making money from the consumer and not from the government. And it, 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 things heal. But what did we say earlier? Four plus million people per month are walking away right now for the past six months. So you've got this and you've got this. This is called a bubble. I'm not saying it's going to burst. I don't know what's going to happen. But the longer we go, the bigger that bubble goes. If they would have tapered or cut earlier, they could have they could have done it. But we're getting to a point where we're getting to the point of no return. So everybody's like, well, what the fuck is next? What the fuck is next? What the fuck is next? They said, well, but Stocky, then why does the stock market keep going up? Please refer to my last YouTube video on why the market keeps going up. Because no one has anywhere else to put their money. You can't keep it in your bank account. Remember, if inflation is close to 7% right now, that means your money is going to be worth less, 7% less at the end of the year. So if you have $10,000 in the bank, you'll still have $10,000 in your savings account at the end of the year, but it'll only be worth $9,300 compared to what it's worth today. So nobody wants to have that happen. So everybody's trying to get some money out there. And that's why they're putting it in crypto and equities because there's nowhere else to put your money. Can't put it in bonds. That's trash. Real estate's flatlining. So that's where we're at right now, guys. 
There's a lot more intricacies, and before somebody in chat goes, well, actually, that's not all of it, I know. I'm doing this for the average viewer, not for the people that have all of the, um, 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 you know, all of the, the, the intricacies and understandings of everything, okay? Please understand that. Can you do it for below average viewers? Sure. Your money is a pizza. If you leave your, if you leave your pizza out on the counter, which is like your savings account, each day, ants come and eat a little bit of it. Okay, every day it sits on the counter, the ants eat a little bit of it. You have less and less pizza every single day. So you say to yourself, well shit, I don't want that to happen. So you say, you know what? I'm gonna stick it in my refrigerator. Well, it, it stays in one piece, but it starts to get tough and dry, right? This is like putting it in bonds or in, in CDs, right? Like, sure, it, it keeps it, and it, it goes away less than when the ants are there, but it starts to dry out, right? And so it's not as bad as the ants eating it, but it's slower, but you're still losing it, right? So then you're like, well, Stocky, then I need to find something else. You could always keep it in a nice little hot box, right? Keeps it nice and warm. Right? Keeps it nice and warm. Come and get it anytime you want. If anything, it starts to taste better over time. But you never know when somebody's gonna come and flip that switch off. If they flip the switch off, it rots because it's so humid in here from all the steam earlier that now the mold goes significantly Welcome higher and it just goes away. Gang. That's a risk, right? That's the stock market. Or you can just say, fuck it. I don't want to risk losing it. I either want to risk all of it or none of it. And you decide to take the pizza. Don't tell your wife. Pick up the pizza on the way to your girlfriend's house. And have sex and eat pizza for the greatest time of your life. And either it's the best time of your life or you get caught and you lose everything. That's weekly options. Is this the beginning of the end? What do we go all in on? Uh, the, the, go all in on yourself, man. Listen, that's why paying down your debt right now is so important. No, th listen, I'm not, I'm not getting out of the market. Welcome, Jake Schro, to the Right, I'm not getting out of the market. My, my money's still in the market. I'm not running away from the market because I can't time it. Who knows? Maybe we run forever. Maybe we run for everything. The market just continues to run. I don't know. I'm not going to try and time it. I'm not going to try and time the market. I'll just continue to invest. I'll keep a little extra cash on the side, but I'm just going to keep investing.